This video talks about pharmacokinetics. This is from page 259 from first day 2012. So if you want to follow along with me, please feel free to do so. Okay, the first thing we have to understand is volume distribution. So remember how we broke down our body mass into two compartments? There was 40% mass and 60% uh, water, right? This was again divided into extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid, right? And extracellular fluid was again divided into interstitial fluid and plasma volume, right? We had this. So whenever we're talking about volume distribution, this distribution, the effect of distribution, can really happen um, anywhere. It can go to the intracellular fluid, it can go to the extracellular fluid. I mean, the drug can go to any of these compartments. Wherever there is fluid, it can go. Now, how do we define a volume distribution? The one that we have on the denominator is going to be plasma drug concentration. And the one that is going to be on the numerator is going to be amount of drug in the body. Okay? Now, whenever we talk about plasma drug concentration, it's got to be in the plasma, right? That means this corresponds to only this box what drug is present in this box and whenever a drug is present in the plasma imagine that this is your our albumin and let's imagine that this is our drug it has to be bound to our albumin right plasma drug concentration is the concentration of drug that is bound to albumin but amount of drug in the body that can be present anywhere it can be present extracellular or intracellular or interstitial fluid or even plasma volume. So that's kind of the total amount of drug in the body divided by plasma drug concentration. So that is volume distribution. Um, now let's do clearance. Clearance, we have the exact same um, denominator. So this is also going to be plasma drug concentration on the numerator. Sorry, in the denominator. And on the numerator is going to be rate of elimination of drug. Okay, rate of elimination of drug is going to be clearance. Okay, so that is our volume distribution and that's our clearance, rate of elimination of the drug. Now, see how some things can change some of these variables. For example, if you have a liver problem, for example, if you have cirrhosis, or let's say if you have a kidney problem, don't you think your plasma drug concentration is going to drop because there is going to be more, there's going to be less uh, albumin to, to, to bind, right? If you have a kidney disease, if you have a nephrotic syndrome, you're going to lose your albumin. So there is going to be less drug bound to the albumin. So those things can, can change the plasma drug concentration. Now the volume distribution can be divided into three tiers. There is the low VD, there is the medium VD, and there is the high VD. And what each of them represent. The low VD was estimated to be about 4 to 8 liters. Okay? And this is, these are the kind of drugs, I will just say drugs here because it could be any substance, but really we're talking about drugs. So these drugs uh, can distribute themselves in, in, in the blood. So they distribute in blood. That's, that's one thing. You know, it's, they have low VD, so they only distribute in blood. They are also um, large slash charged molecules. Okay, they're large or charged molecules. So they kind of... Uh, they kind of stay where they are. They cannot really go to everywhere. You know, plasma is the is their boundary kind of. So those drugs are low VD. Now, what about medium VD? Where else do they go for medium? Now, drugs those are medium VD. They are usually hydrophilic. 
so water la loving so they really don't need they don't need binding to the to albumin right they don't need to bind because they're hydrophilic okay so those are medium vd and what about distribution medium vd they distribute in the extracellular fluid or body water so they go to any body water for medium vd now how is medium vd different from high vd in contrast to medium vd high vd is going to be hydrophobic because they are lipophilic okay they bind to the protein and fat of tissue okay so they bind everywhere how much tissue do we have we are made up of tissues and proteins and fats so they bind to those proteins and fats because they are hydrophilic um, so they go all over the body they go everywhere so those are high VD so we can say that the low VD binds to albumin the medium VD binds to um, doesn't bind to protein they are hydrophilic and the high VD are going to be hydrophobic so that's a rough distribution of VD very very quickly next we have half-life now half-life we have 0 0.7 times VD by CL that's the that's the equation you take VD by CL now for half-lives um, half-lives usually for a particular drug to reach steady state it has to go about four to five half-lives okay for it to reach a uh, steady state so at about first half-life the drug is going to go down to 50% uh, so you're going to be left with 50% okay by the end of second half-life it the 75% of the drug is going to be gone you're going to be left with 25% um, the best thing to do is kind of memorize this number so that you don't really have to calculate it in exam and kill time by the end of third half-life we are talking about 87.5% being used and the rest uh, is going to be left by the end of fourth half-life, we're talking about 93.75% is, 0.75% is going to be used. So 50, 75, 87.5, 93.75. These are the, I'm just putting on four half-lives. Usually they give four half-lives, but if they don't give four, more than four, then you just have to, you know, do it manually. There is no other way. Okay, so the next equation we want to talk about is going to be bioavailability actually it's not an equation uh, just uh, a concept we want to talk about now whenever we are giving a drug IV bioavailability is going to be 100 because this drug uh, this drug that we're putting through IV does not need to go through first pass metabolism in the liver or kidney or any of the cells right it's right 100% of the drug is going to be inside the body but when we are orally taking a drug that's when the percentage that is being metabolized in the liver after that whatever is left is going to be the bioavailability the sign for bioavailability is F and God knows why it's F I mean why would not it be B that would make our life simple right so next we want to talk about two other different equations those are the maintenance dose and the loading dose okay so maintenance dose is going to be CP times VD by F. Obviously F is going to be by availability. CP is going to be target plasma concentration times VD is going to be for volume distribution. That's maintenance dose. C F is by availability and that is dependent on the function of liver or kidney. So you can see that if you have liver or kidney, disease the bioavailability is going to go up makes sense right because your liver is not functioning anyway so that's maintenance dose what about loading dose loading dose we have CP we have bioavailability but instead of um, volume distribution we're actually going to use clearance okay so now these are the equations we have to know for USMLE for this pharmacokinetics uh, chapter in the next video, I'll be talking about different examples of how we can use these equations in different questions.